Tom? Yeah? If you had asked me 10 years ago, would I rather spend almost £50,000 on a new Audi or a new Kia, I would have laughed my head off. Could you have actually spent nearly 50 grand on a Kia 10 years ago? Oh, I don't think you could. But it just goes to show how things have changed in these electrified times, doesn't mm. it? Because now it's the traditional premium brands that are playing catch up. So Jenny Buckley, I have a question for you. Yes. Which would you rather have, a Kia or an Audi? Oh, I feel a test coming on and he loves a twin test. I certainly do. So here's the thing. Where? Oh, stop it. <laughs> How funny. Uh, the thing is that uh, car buyers are far more brand agnostic today than they used to be. Yeah. Um, I think particularly when it comes to electric cars, a car is just a good car, irrespective of what badge it wears on the front. You know people that would never in a million years have considered something like a Kia or a Hyundai mm -hmm. or even like or even a brand new brand like Polestar are yeah. now more than willing to switch sides if the product is good. Yeah. Which actually brings us to these two, the Kia EV6 and the Audi Q4 e-tron. Actually, they are so close. There's around £900 difference between the two That's of them. That's not much very similar specs, uh, very similar ranges. So the big question is... What does agnostic mean? No, Wux. It's which would you rather go for? Okie doke, me first. So the Q4 e-tron is Audi's first mid-sized SUV and it's based on the same bits underneath as cars like the VW ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq, which is a pretty good base. Of course, it looks completely different. It has that Audi style, it looks very solid and smart is always a word I like to use for Audi. You know, this car isn't trying to be anything else other than a rather distinctive electric Audi and I think it's all the better for that. The main feature is of course the textured blanked off grille section which is massive. There are some actual vents for cooling underneath. I think it's classy and understated and I really like the full width light bars. I know lots of cars have them but I think they look great. Overall it's handsome and sensible. It might not be a look at me car but I like it. But could you actually, you know, love it? I'm not sure that that Audi Q4 e-tron isn't so conservative that it's just a little bit boring, which is not something you can say about this, the Kia EV6. Ta-da! Now, we might have got a little bit more used to the Kia EV6 since it was launched because we've seen a few out on the roads, but I happen to think it's still a particularly striking looking thing. It is a little bit bigger than it first appears if you've only seen it in pictures, but it's still a five-seat mid-size hatchback thing. People say that it's an SUV, but it's not really. What it is, is interesting to look at. It's got this big, slightly frowny face, which blends all the way back into a, a kind of a coupe-ish body. It's got a big light bar at the back, which curves downwards and looks really interesting. And then there's little ears that stick out from the spoiler. Everything about it shouts new and fresh. And even in this sober color with slightly smaller wheels, it makes the Audi look a bit frumpy. In fact, I think your Q4 e-tron actually just looks like pretty much every other Audi SUV. But what are Audi particularly good at? That's right, interiors. They do amazing interiors, don't they? Interiors that do make you feel special when you sit inside them, and the Q4 doesn't change that. So you've got this angular slab of dash with the usual um, large touch screen there in the center. And that is complemented by all these sharp looking shapes uh, on the rest of the inside, different materials. I love the shape of the steering wheel and how it reflects that second display just behind it. It's all really well thought through. So you've got physical buttons down here for um, the climate control, which again, I really like. You can operate audio from down here. And then you've got this slick little gear selector. One thing that I don't like, and really there aren't many things that um, irritate me about this interior, um, is the piano black. That's just more of a style thing. Honestly, I know they look lovely when they're really shiny and polished, but I don't clean my car every day. Probably don't clean it every month, if I'm being really honest. And this is just constantly covered in fingerprints, which does annoy me a little bit. Um, the other thing actually that I've noticed, and I've been living with this car for a while, is that sometimes it just doesn't sync through to Apple CarPlay as quickly as I'd like. It can be a little bit glitchy, um, just temperamental, uh, and that irritates me slightly. But other than that, every time I get in here, I feel serene and I feel relaxed. And for me, that's what a good interior of a car should do to you. 
Here in the back, there is plenty of room and it's comfortable for people who are much taller than me. And I can confirm that you can easily fit three adults in here. I know because I've tried it. And the boot is big enough to carry a massive tent, chairs and the rest of my camping equipment. It's always good to be prepared, isn't it? The Kia does have a 480 litre boot, so it is a smidge smaller than the Audis. Though it is a decent shape and it's got a relatively low load lip, which counts for a lot. Also, I have a little bit <coughs> of a secret weapon in that the EV6 has a frunk, which the Audi doesn't. And that frunk weighs in at 52 litres. So technically, the EV6 has more storage space than the Audi, albeit split between the front and the back of the car. Still, I'm counting that as a win. There's also more space in the back seats than the Audi, although the floor does feel slightly higher, so it kind of pushes my knees up. Well, it does me anyway. And when you get up here, it's pretty much all good news. Ginny might be really impressed with the Audi's designery feel, but I don't think the Kia feels left behind at all. You get this big bank with two 12.3 inch screens, this side being a touch screen, big floating center console with the gear selector on it. It feels space age. This is not a kind of old school manufacturer trying to reinvent their normal interior. This is a clean sheet design. So basically on the steering wheel, you've got a few buttons, uh, you've got stalks like a normal car and then a touchscreen, and then this bar underneath, which you can change what is actually displayed on it. So in this mode, you've got all the AC controls, you press this button and then you get all the different controls for things like radio, the satellite navigation, all of that kind of thing. In the central spa, you've got a wireless charging pad, um, you've got a couple of cup holders, and then this really deep centre console covered slot down here. And then all of this space down here with more charging, both USB-C and USB standard. The good thing about this car is it feels like it's a little bit warmer and more playful than the Audi. It's also got quite a lot more kit as standard than that Audi Sport, which makes it lightly impressive. Now, obviously the kit that you get depends on which model you choose, but if you get confused, then please do log on to electrifying.com and we'll help you work through the spec sheets. All in all though, I find this car really quite relaxing. The seats are fabric, but they're made of recycled materials. So that makes it feel like it's, it's doing a good job of being quite ecological. And everything feels really nicely put together. It isn't quite as beautiful as the Audi, but it's certainly not left behind. But suffice to say, both of these cars get all the usual creature comforts and more than their fair share of driver assistance systems. In terms of range and charging, this is a mid-range Q4 e-tron 40. It gets a 77.6 kilowatt hour battery with a possible range of 320 miles of official WLTP range. Now I've been running this car for a while and what I'm getting is close to 280 miles, which I think is pretty good. I drive it on a mixture of roads. I do a fair amount of motorway driving and it's been on some long trips down to Cornwall with me. Overall, it copes well and I'm really happy with the efficiency on it. There's 11 kilowatt AC charging, which is fine, and 135 kilowatt DC charging, which should see a 10 to 8% rapid charge in just over half an hour. It's about what you'd expect for this kind of car in this kind of price bracket. Not stunning, but it's not bad. It's not exactly cutting edge. Would I like to see more powerful charging options on what is meant to be a cutting edge Audi? Yes, I would, but it's good enough for now. Oh, and the charging port is right here, exactly where the petrol cap might be. So all that is very standard and familiar. The EV6 has a charge port here on the right hand side rear of the car. And that's about the only standard thing about the way the EV6 drinks electricity, because this is really good at the charging stuff. This is an EV6 long range rear wheel drive, and it's got a 74 kilowatt hour battery, slightly smaller than the Q4, but it manages a smidge more range, probably down to aerodynamic gains and extra efficiency and registers 328 miles on the WLTP cycle. That is a good set of numbers because we should really stop judging cars on their outright range and concentrate more on how efficient they are. Then there's the fact that the EV6 gets an 800 volt charging system that you usually find on much more expensive cars. Basically, it's more efficient than the usual 400 volt, doesn't get as hot and can therefore charge faster. 
The EV6 can charge at about 233 kilowatts if you're on a big enough rapid charger, if you can find one, which means 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. That's nearly 50% faster than the Q4. There's also similar 11 kilowatt AC charging to the Audi, which is fine, but I think I win this one. Not quite as fast. You know I said that the Audi is well put together. Well, that impression stays when you get inside because this is a very, very refined car to drive. You know, even the windscreen wipers are quiet. And usually when a car is as refined and insulated as this one, you get some squeaky bits from the trim or the suspension or, of course, road noise. But not in here, it's really very impressive and it does make for a very relaxing drive. So as far as the actual driving grows, it's all very grown up. Look, it's not bags of fun, but that's not what you're looking for with a car like this. What the Q4 e-tron does have is loads of grip, really nice ride, and the steering is pretty good too. Now this is the e-tron 40, which means you get the single 201 brake horsepower motor in the rear driving the wheels. Now you can get the e-tron 50 with the same battery you get an extra motor, a bit more power. I'm actually not sure it's worth it because I think that this is enough speed. 0 to 62 is around eight and a half seconds and that makes it nippy but not silly. So when I'm driving the e-tron, I mainly use B mode, which gives me the maximum regeneration, which again, I just really like. And I can find that I can do most of my driving without really touching the brake pedal much at all. I just get some satisfaction from knowing that that power is going back into the battery, even if it's just a tiny bit. One thing I really love is the shape of the steering wheel. So I mentioned earlier, I like the way it looks, but I also like the way it feels with its mixture of leather and steel. And it's not overly large or cumbersome. All in all, I reckon the Q4 e-tron stands up really well in the driving stakes. It's not going to blow your mind, but it definitely makes for a calm and relaxing driving experience. And to be honest, that's more important to me these days. Hmm. Now, obviously it depends what you want from a car, but I happen to think that the EV6 is a much better drive than the Audi, and I think I can prove it with maths. This is a long-range EV6 with rear-wheel drive. So like the Audi, it only has a single motor in the back driving the rear wheels, but it's got a little bit more power at 226 brake horsepower. And it is over 100 kilograms lighter than the German car. So unsurprisingly, it's quite a bit quicker. Zero to 62 miles an hour takes just 7.3 seconds. And that is enough to make it feel, you know, appreciably quicker. But more than that, it just feels a little bit more, the only word I can think of is giddy. It's happier to be driven a bit quicker and then it's more fun when you do. But then it's got a really good spread of ability. It rides really well. It's really happy and quiet to cruise. It's not quite as solid feeling as the Audi on the move. I don't think it's as quiet as the Audi, but it's quiet enough. And also it's just that bit more involving and that counts for a lot from when I'm driving my own cars. It's not quite as solid feeling as the Audi on the move. It is slightly noisier, but it's definitely more involving. And from where I'm sitting, that counts for quite a lot. It also has really good brake regeneration like all Kias, and it's one of their best features, I think. So basically, you can increase brake regen from this paddle on the left behind the wheel. See it slowing it down. And then you can knock it off again with this paddle on the right. It's called iPedal. It works really, really well. You sort of change down when you're approaching a junction or a roundabout and then you can change up again. You're not really changing gear, but it does alter the way the car slows and then moves away. I tend to knock it off on a motorway and then use a much stronger brake regeneration in town. The thing is, I think some of the fun comes from the fact that the EV6 feels a lot lower than the high riding Audi and it's got better reactions because of it. And again, if you wanted to go faster, there are more powerful versions of the EV6 and they also have a front mounted motor to give four wheel drive. But you know what, when I'm just cruising around, I don't really need a lot more horsepower. This isn't a sports car, even though the big four wheel drive ones do feel a lot more exciting. If this was my commuting vehicle, I wouldn't need like a ton more horsepower because if you go zooming around all of the time, you will get nicked and put in prison. And I wouldn't do well in prison because I'm too pretty. You really like the CV6, don't you? I do, because it's a really rounded car. 
It's not a rounded camera at all. It's a really nice kind of angle. You know exactly yeah. what I mean. It's a, oh. I tell you what, and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to shoehorn in the fact that that Kia has Kia's brilliant seven year warranty, which yeah. is a little bit longer than the one on the Audi, and the fact that the better looking, more fun to drive, more spacious, nicer car is actually the cheaper one. Okay, you played all your cards there, didn't you? I dropped that because all of the cards I have are now <laughs> on the table. I have no more cards. And I don't want to disappoint you, but I agree with you. Completely well, right. That doesn't make for a very good video <laughs> though, does it? You're supposed to disagree with me. I know, but all those things that you said, apart from it being round, which it quite clearly isn't, um, were true. This is a really, really good car. I do like it, but that doesn't mean that I think um, the Q4 e-tron is in any way a poor relation in my book, because I think this is the car um, that Audi have really cracked mainstream electric with. I think it's a fantastic package. Mm, I think it's nicer inside. It feels more solid, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just a, on a lot of levels though. I think it's on the efficiency. You know, it just feels great when you sit inside it. As you said, it's got that kind of hug of Audiness. And for a lot of buyers, even though I started off by saying people are more brand agnostic, <laughs> yeah, but for a lot of people, those four rings do matter. And Audi does have a lot of brand loyalty. Yeah, they do. But for me, I like the fresh new stuff. And I'm not so swayed by the traditional premium idea. So what you're basically saying is that I'm a bit old and fuddy-duddy and you're young and fresh. I'm very much saying that. I'm very cool and fresh, but the one oh, thing I think it demonstrates... on that note. I'm going. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I'll do the end. The thing is, I think it demonstrates that traditional premium brands these days have to up their game, don't they? Because yeah. people are quite prepared to go for whichever is the best car, no matter what badge it's got on the front. Absolutely. Mm. There you go. Well, there are our thoughts. Do let us know which one you would go for in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. But which car would you choose based on our evidence? The EV6 or the Audi Q4 e-tron? Let us know in the comments. And if you would like to know more in detail about these two cars or any of their competitors, head over to electrifying.com where we have all the lowdown. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and switch those notifications on.